Meditations friends, welcome back to my channel. If you if you read the title, y you know what we're reviewing today, right? That that's right, this guy right here. This is Britannia from Raja Parfums. This is a very expansive bottle of perfume, and this has been on my must buy list for forever, for years, probably at least five years. This fragrance is spectacular, and I'm gonna review it for you. So let's go. Two very important things. One, I bought this. <laughs> this was not sent to me to review. I also am a fan of Raja. So if those two things are important to you when you are watching a Raja review, if you care if somebody purchased something and your thoughts on the reviewer's thoughts on the house, I'm a fan of Raja. I'm not a blind fangirl of Raja, but I am a fan of the Raja Parfums. And I bought this, then there you go. I will be giving you guys in the next like 20 seconds a quick little review blurb of this if you only want to watch for like two to three minutes to just know how the fragrance develops, smells, and notes. Definitely that way you don't have to sit through a long video. But this is a very expensive bottle of perfume. This is a holy grail fragrance of mine and I want to really deep dive into this scent. So. I'm gonna give you guys a quick little review in the beginning so you don't have to sit through a long, talky, detailed, chatty video. But if you wanna sit through a long, talky, chatty, detailed video and know why this is a holy grail fragrance of mine, then you can. But you don't have to if you don't want to. Also, if you're unfamiliar and you're curious, this retails a full retail price for $1,050. So whether or not you get it gray market, you buy a partial, somebody's decluttering their collection, you purchase a decant, I'm going to be reviewing this as it was full retail price. So I'm gonna be letting you guys know about my thoughts on it as a full retail price for $1,050. Yeah it's expensive. I'm also going to be putting it down because if you are unfamiliar, I am well known for flinging Rajas across the room. Yes, I've done that before and yes, I'm horrified. And yes, the bottle was fine. And it was 51 Parfum, another 3.4 ounce bottle. It, not a crack on it when I flung it 10 feet into the air and it landed on a hardwood floor. I'm very proud of that bottle, not proud of my clumsiness. So the notes in this fragrance, I'm going to be basically just letting you guys know the more predominant notes, as with Raja fragrances, specifically their more, um, I would say, complex scents. There's a lot that goes into them, and sometimes the notes focus more on elevation, and I'd rather just talk about the predominant notes that really make an impact on your skin. So you have bergamot, mandarin, and tangerine in the opening. At the heart, you have rose de mai, you have jasmine, heliotrope, violet and peach. And at the base, you have cinnamon, clove, patchouli, vetiver, sandalwood, vanilla, cocoa, orris, ambergris, and musk. Now, this is a powdery, woody, ambery scent. So if you do not like vintage, smelling, ambery, woody, powdery fragrances, this, this won't be the fragrance for you because you just, you will not like it. The powdery note in here is borderline doesn't kind of go over, but borderline on that kind of slightly stale uh, lipstick smell. And for some people, they hate that. And for some people, they viciously love that. I am of the viciously love that smell. There's something very classic, very glamorous, just very beautiful about that smell. I, I want to smell like that all the time, all the time. I want to smell like that every day. And that is that kind of powder in here. It's not like a soft, marshmallowy, sweet powder. It's not like an ethereal skin scent, musky. No, it, 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 is, it is like stale lipstick, but it's just borderline to where it feels like bitter and too much. And if you don't like that, you're, you're not going to like this. Now, the thing that I like most about this fragrance to kind of round it to this quick little review is it's a beautiful kind of vintage, complex, gorgeous fragrance that also feels like it has a modern, minimalistic take to it. And I attribute that to the cocoa. So it opens up bright and almost slightly juicy from the tangerine and the mandarin and the bergamot. I would say that there's nothing about this that has that kind of old world, aldehydic, 
Esque type of opening that you might see from these more ambery, vintage inspired fragrances. The, the citruses here are more to play with the florals. The florals in here, you get a lot, but you really get the rose. The rose isn't front and center, but it definitely plays a part to kind of sweeten the woods and to also work really nicely with these gorgeous powdery ambery elements. The amber grape gives it a touch of salt in the background that works really nicely with these gorgeous, exotic, very beautiful aromatics that work to kind of add this kind of touch of spice that doesn't overpower, but kind of works to blend and balance everything. But what I love specifically is the cocoa, and the cocoa, in my opinion, is what gives it this slight modern edge. The cocoa to me is a little bit more predominant than I would expect. When I look at some of these more kind of iris, powdery, dominant, more vintage mature compositions, I usually see like a lot of carrot. Carrot adds a sweetness, it adds a roundness, it adds this almost vegetal softness to iris and orris and to powdery fragrances that I think really helps balance. But what the cocoa does, it's not like chocolate, it's not like tonic, it's not milky. There's a bitterness to this fragrance, so it almost adds like a clarity and a little bit of a bite to the powderiness, which I think actually helps tame it and takes it just to the edge of it being slightly, again, like kind of stale lipsticky, but kind of grounds it in a way that makes it a little bit more woodsy, a little bit more um, earthy. It's not that it smells earthy, but it just gives it something for it to hold on to. And what that does is it helps the woods and the spices and the aromatics to kind of play nice with everybody else. And it really kind of helps the florals kind of bloom on your skin. This fragrance is one of those fragrances that is a symphony. So when I review fragrances, I kind of talk about sometimes there is a fragrance where it is a song and you can hear the different instruments. So you can hear the percussion, you can hear the flute. Here's this guitar solo. There's a cowbell in the background. And then there's some fragrances that it is like an entire orchestra and it's a beautiful melody, but you can't quite pick out one distinctive note. You can't pick out one distinctive instrument. It is just a song and everything comes and blends together beautifully. That is this fragrance. You can pick up a bit of the powder, you can pick up a bit of the cocoa, you can pick up a bit of the rose, but it really comes together into this kind of beautifully complex but still very effortless and very chic um, I would say vintage inspired, but still semi-modern experience on the skin. The powdery elements give it that nice vintage feel of what you look for from those more glamorous fragrances and makes it feel very luxurious and very elevated, especially because the powders don't feel quite as stale and quite as challenging. There is a softness and a roundness to them, but the part to me that makes this slightly more modern has to do with that cocoa. And that's what I really enjoy about this fragrance is that kind of duality that just smells really gorgeous on the skin. It's really special, but it's also something that you can wear pretty much anywhere. And that is my little quick review of this scent. So if that is what you cared for, there you go. But let's break it down. Do my clap track, wubba wubba, like wiki wiki, but well, we're not gonna do that. Instead, what we're going to do is we're gonna kind of talk about how this fragrance fits. So when I purchase fragrances and when I have like an idea of this is how much money I'm going to spend, there are houses that I am more forgiving of of certain things and more houses I'm stricter of with specific things. Raja is a house that I do not expect creative ingenuity. I do not expect new formulas, new compositions. I don't. If they do, fantastic. That is not what I expect. However, what I demand is the best of the best. Now, some people demand something new. They're like, if I'm going to smell an inspired fragrance that maybe smells a little tiny bit better than something, 
um, I would just rather spend a quarter less than what this costs and just buy that. There's nothing wrong with that. I will never sit here and say that anybody is incorrect for having standards when it comes down to their fragrance purchasing. I myself have my own rules and standards for adding fragrances to my collection, and I'm not going to argue with other people that have their own standards, which is why in the very beginning of this video I said if you do not like people who enjoy the House of Raja, this might not be the review for you because I am a ha fan of the House of Raja. I don't buy it as often, or I don't buy them as often because I've decided that this is one of the houses I'm going to add little by little to my collection because I want to add when I'm ready to add. And it's just that's how I've decided to add fragrances to my collection from this house. But when I do buy Raja, I do have very specific standards for what I decide to buy and when I decide to buy. So Britannia has been on my must buy list for years and I just ran out of my last decant of it like a few weeks ago. So that's pretty much why I decided to finally buy this because if I have samples and decants of something, I've decided that, hey, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm gonna finally buy this because this is something that I wear. Now this fragrance could easily, easily, easily be found cheaper in cheaper formulas and cheaper fragrances. This composition is not new. But what I love about it, what makes this a holy grail for me, is the addition of cocoa. And what I like about this fragrance is that it has a unique modern twist that I don't usually see from this house. And they did it in a way that's very successful and a way that I really enjoy that also works beautifully with my skin composition, with my just how fragrances smell. So this is more of a personal way that it smells on my skin, that it works, and I've smelled this on other people, and I know that it smells amazing on my skin. It smells amazing on other people, but on my skin, just the cocoa, it just really brings out a warmth and an earthiness and almost kind of a woodiness that really balances out this beautiful powdery note and these gorgeous florals in a way that just makes this smell breathtaking and sophisticated but again has this slight modern edge on my skin so with any fragrance i always recommend in getting a sample of it and trying it on your skin first but most definitely with with thousand over thousand dollar bottles of perfume please do not buy this blind even if you see an amazing deal on it try it on your skin first this is very expensive now what I like a lot about the way that Raja Parfums composes complex fragrances is how it is a symphony. There are some houses where you can really pick up these almost beautiful nuanced notes. You can really pick up the Alang, here's the cocoa, over here's a little bit of carrot. And those are interesting and fantastic. And they're kind of, they that you don't get olfactive fatigue from it. They're kind of, you smell it and you're like, oh, here's a little bit of vetiver and there's the patchouli. I love that and I think that that's fantastic. But sometimes with some compositions, at least on my skin, what happens is, is if it's a very complex fragrance and it's a more kind of mature composition, if it's not so unique or new or modern, or a little bit more avant-garde, it almost takes away from this beautiful experience. When I look at these more mature, elegant compositions, I want to kind of feel like I am walking in and playing dress up as somebody who is actually sophisticated and elegant, like an old Hollywood um, actor or actress, like walking into my dressing room and here are my powders, and there's the makeup artist, and I'm getting dressed, and I'm ready to go on stage, or I'm ready to um, perform. That is one of the ways that I want to feel with some of these more glamorous, more old world vintage smelling fragrances. I want that transportive experience. And for me, that is more of a symphony style composition and less of a picking up notes here and there but I also want the elevated experience. And I think that's also why I like these more 
um, stale kind of powdery uh, notes in these scents because it reminds me of glamorous old makeup sitting on a vanity and that just kind of takes me to that time point and I just I love it there's just something about it that smells so beautiful and so perfect and that is a personal thing and that's kind of like why I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about this being a holy grail fragrance because as a transportive fragrance this is one of the only fragrances that has ever truly been able to captivate me and transport me and make me kind of feel like maybe in a parallel universe, although there's no parallel universe that I would be elegant and sophisticated, but maybe if there was even a slight chance, this is the frig this is the smell that it would be. And there's something about this that is something that I like to smell like. So everybody kind of has those ideals those scents that take them to a holiday, those scents that remind them of their childhood, those scents that make them feel special. As somebody who's not elegant, no. There's something about breathtakingly beautiful, elegant scents that smell elevated and perfect and really perform gorgeously on my skin that I just am willing to pay anything for and that is a me thing that is not me recommending you guys going out there and spending a ridiculous amount of money on a bottle of perfume but as a collector and somebody who enjoys perfume this this is one that I have as I get handprints all over it hi this is something that for me is an experience and it's something that I enjoy Another example of one of those fragrances that unfortunately is discontinued, and if I wanted to buy back a bottle of it, it would cost as much as this, is Tiempe Passate from Antonia's Flowers. That's another one that's just a perfect scent. It is a very specific way that I like to smell, and it is a very specific way that a fragrance has to perform to make me really feel like it's taking me there. And the way that this just, just, just slightly smells like um, lipstick that isn't quite bad yet, but it's there. Like that beautiful, glamorous, old, um, powdery smell of makeup. The florals in here are rich and deep, but you can't quite pick up all of them. There's a perfumed opulence to this fragrance that just smells like somebody has drowned themselves in whatever beautiful bottle of fragrance is on their vanity. And what I like is that modern, even though it's not a modern note, but the cocoa adds a slight modern edge that kind of helps bring all of the aromatic spices together in a way where it just works gorgeously on the skin. And that is why this is to me, on my skin, a holy grail fragrance. And I, I just love it. And from the first second I smelled it on a strip, I was like, this is nice, I like it. I could probably, you know, wear Enslaved or wear a few other fragrances, but when I put this on my skin is when I realized this is magic. And when I tried this on my skin, I used to go to fragrance counters, and there used to be a bunch of us, and we would try all the same fragrances on each other, and this is one of the fragrances on my skin that just smelled like magic. And everyone else was like, oh my goodness, that smells so much better on you. There's just something about my body chemistry with the notes and the way this is composed that just smelled like something I needed to have in my collection. Unfortunately, it's very expensive, very expensive. The way that the cocoa plays with the aromatics and the powder on my skin just made this an absolute masterpiece on me and a beautifully transportive experience in a way that I look for in fragrances <laughs> and I haven't smelled anything that took me to me even pretending to be somebody glamorous in an old old school old Hollywood glamour sort of way but this completely takes me there in if I had to compose a fragrance this is what I would create if I had to close my eyes and think how would I create that smell this is what it would be I don't think I would change anything about this, to be completely honest. And that's why I have no problem paying for this, because this is, to me, a holy grail uh, fragrance. But that doesn't mean it's going to be a holy grail for everybody. 
and please, please sample it first. And like I said, not everybody is a fan of the House of Raja, not everybody is a fan of these types of fragrances, but I did want to review it for you guys and share my thoughts with you because you guys do know I am a fan of the house. I do collect Raja and this was a fragrance that I've been wearing for years and I actually hadn't talked to you guys about, but I decided that the second I got it, I was gonna sit down and chat with you guys because I've been so excited to get this fragrance in my collection. I wanted to share my thoughts with you like as soon as I finally had a bottle of it. So that is my review of Britannia from Raja Parfums. And if you guys have had an opportunity to try this fragrance, I'd love to know what you guys think, positive or negative. Let me know in the comment section below. Or if you guys have any other fragrances that are just beautiful and glamorous and just smell vintage and old world, let me know. I love those fragrances. Uh, let me know what your favorites are. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Bye.